For West Coast Eagles fans, it was a living nightmare all over again. Shades of the 2015 Grand Final, slow out of the blocks, Benny, and a replica 46-point margin at the G, the same as last year. That was freaky, but failing to execute against the best in the business. Welcome to another episode of Eagle Review, proudly sponsored by Masters. Benny Roberts, thanks for joining me. 457 disposals to 292. Inside 50s, basically doubled. Margin probably could have been a lot more in the end. It was a disappointing day for the club. Definitely could have been a lot more. I thought the backs actually, under the circumstances, stood up really well. Um, an onslaught, especially early, like couldn't get their hands on the footy. The midfielders, Hawks were everywhere. Uh, unbelievable skilled side, probably the best we've ever seen. So, uh, a dark day. Seems that they struggled to get their hands on the footy early doors, West Coast. Hawthorne, they had control of the ball and were pinpointing their targets, as we know they can do. Then when we send a player back down to kind of plug up the floodgates, then they really plays into their hands. They have that loose player and can keep that ball control. And their forward leading patterns were sensational, highlighted by this clip as well. Just the way they stay patient, wait for that right option, look at what's going on here, and eventually they get a two-on-one in their forward 50 just from that patience. They are an amazingly well-balanced side. It's so many times you see a ricochet or you see a ball bounce the wrong way and you go, how lucky is that? They've got four blokes there, but it's just they're so well structured and they set up so perfectly that it's not a mistake. That is an elite football side. Geez, they're good. Uh, very impressive. Eagles fans were up and about in that second quarter when we started to make that push, when we jammed through three on the trot, threw a couple of intercept marks, kind of doing what they did to us with that pressure coming out of the back half. While it was a disappointing day, it was good the boys didn't really stop trying, although that 46-point margin doesn't look good or really sum that up in a, in a great way. Two plays I want to highlight, though, of the boys really giving it their all. Will Schofield going back with the fly. He knew it was coming. He knew he was going to get crunched, and he did in that third quarter. And Jackson Nelson as well, Benny. In that situation, you, you have to go these days. There's cameras and there's 3,000 media outlets ready to hang out to dry if you, if you turn back and have a look or pull out. So, well done, Scoey. And Jacko, sore shoulder, uh, tough customer, tough ombre, as they say. Hmm. Uh, backed it up almost immediately, so uh, good signs. Small moments of joy. Jack Darling hasn't probably produced his best football against the Hawks the last few outings. He stood up in a big way, kicked three goals, but his defensive pressure was just as admirable on the day. And Jeremy McGovern, well, we learnt that he is Shannon Hearn-esque when given the ball from outside 50. He's gone whack, bigger than Carlos Braithwaite for the West Indies, if you don't mind, and we know what he is capable of now moving forward. But it's time for the roast of the round, Benny, and they are lining up from all angles this week. We're going to stay local. Let's have a look at Andrew Gaff. His kick on the near wing, oh, I reckon he'd love to have that one again. He really tried to load up about 70 metres down that one. And we'll also lock in Scotty Lyser. Drop chest marks, always going to get a mention on the show, Benny. Yep, yep they are. Uh, what about this one, Luke Shuey? I don't think he's quite got the football here. Uh, it's about 50 metres away and he's getting thrown into the second row. That's as blat ant as he's going to get there, yep. I think. And, what, and, what, and Gov, I mean, this new rule, Mark Evans, I'm talking to you, Mark, uh, this new rule, the 15 metre zone or whatever it is, there's two blokes on that mark there and then he encroaches even further. They can't, you know, it's, that was, uh, well, 50 metres. That was an interesting one. We're going to go around the grounds now. Tyrone Vickery, I love this little cheeky effort. What about his mark in the right forward pocket? How's his little subtle creep around here? Jeez, he did a great job disguising it, but then he went one too many, and the ump said, nah, we'll bring it right back. Very clever way to do it. I think that'll be mimicked around the competition. Here's one for you. The Logies are coming up. Bit stiff to not get uh, nominated this year, but there's always next year. Uh, Carlton, Blake, Bokehurst, uh, Geez, this is stuff you see in the EPL, just the, the hand, I think it hits him in the chest, I might not if even, only. If, if only. Raises the chest. Throws the head back as if shot and uh, gets a free kick and kicks a goal out of it, so uh, keep an eye out on those. Shocking kick during that game. Did you see Hewitt's kick in the middle of the ground? Yeah, not ideal. Gaffy probably had a word to him about it beforehand. <laughs> Flicking through channels on the weekend, came across the Melbourne Essendon game. Enjoyed this stat from David King, though. Check this out. I think for Essendon to win this game, they're going to have to hit the 100 tackle mark. They're already up to 17. Uh, Essendon had 66 tackles, had a win. Yeah, so. Yeah, just meaningless stats getting thrown out there. Meaningless stats. Uh, did you see uh, the Geelong GWS game? Saw all of it. Uh, did you catch this effort from uh, Mr. Kirsten of Geelong? You are lucky to be three metres out from the goal line and you've missed a lot. Mm. Uh, that's something. Not one, not one score there. I think we would kick that goal. That's a big call. Surely we'd dribble it somewhere behind those goals. We'd score. Yeah, we would, but it is time for our winner. Let's unveil him. And it is none other than the Brownlow medalist yeah. here at Domain Stadium, where we are right now. These goals don't come any simpler with no pressure on you. It doesn't. It's probably more so that the standards he sets, he's a Brownlow medalist. I'm so. saying the under nines would, would have put it through. Yeah, I mean, Alex Pierce. Yeah, set, pretty, is, that, is that as bad for you? Set the, set the tone. 
Oh, geez, I don't know. It's on the ground. Pretty. It's in a bit closer. Fifey was shades of Josh Photo Hill. Jo Josh Hill esque, I thought, from the and derby. And don't say we're Frio bashing because we're going to have a big crack at Josh Hill. He's done it before as well. No, so he has. Fifey's um, not the only one. Nah, it is possible, but. Nervous times and horrendous moments. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Eagle Review, proudly sponsored by Masters. And if you would like the chance to join the Masters More Awesome Squad, follow Masters Milk on Facebook to find out how you can win the ultimate Eagles fan experience. We'll see you next week, Derby Week. Get around it. Bye.